MBA 633 instructional video prepared by Professor Ahmed Tada, School of Management, George Mason University. In this clip, we will discuss counting rules, specifically uh, permutations and combinations. They help us enumerate outcomes for discrete sample spaces. And you will find that being able to count how many outcomes there are in an experiment lies at the heart of probability calculations involving discrete sample spaces. So let's look at our first example here. Uh, you've just arrived at Dulles International Airport from a trip to Jamaica and the customs official suspects that you brought too many bottles of rum and wants to check your bag. You have a TSA lock, but in your panic, you've forgotten the combination. What is the likelihood that you'll be able to open your suitcase on the very first try and not create further suspicion? And your TSA lock has three wheels and each having numerals zero through nine. So if you if we use the terminology of um, probability um, concepts that we introduced earlier, what is the sample space for this experiment? In other words, how many possible outcomes can I have? So for the first wheel, I have 10 possible outcomes, 0 through 9. And I can repeat, any of these numbers can repeat themselves in the next two wheels. So I also have 10, try, 10 options uh, for the second try. And I have 10 options for the third try, the third wheel. So the total number of options that I have, alternatives, so total number of outcomes that are possible with this combination lock, 10 times 10 times 10. If there were four wheels, it would be 10 times 10 times 10. So there are 10 to the 3 possible outcomes. So the sample space, which is the set of all possible outcomes, now notice that in this situation, order matters. So if your combination lock, uh, you will find later it really shouldn't be called a combination lock. But if this lock opening sequence is 734, seven, four, then you really have to turn the, uh, the, the numbers in that sequence. So if you had 347, that wouldn't open the lock, even though you had the numerals correct, but the order is not. So you have a situation here where order matters. Okay, And when order matters, the uh, counting rule that you use is what is called a permutation. And in this specific case, you have permutation with repetition. What it means is the options that you have on one trial are also available on the second trial, are also available on the third trial, and so forth. Okay. So in general, if you have n options open on any one trial, and there are r trials, and you're allowed to repeat the options on every trial, the total number of alternatives that you have for the sample space is simply n to the power r, n to the r. Okay, so the likelihood that you will be able to open your suitcase on the very first try is simply 1 over 10 to the 3. That, of course, assumes that all alternatives are equally likely. In other words, you don't remember what the first digit might have been or what the second digit might have been. So uh, we are saying that each of the outcomes are equally likely, so the likelihood or the probability of your opening it on the very first try is 1 over 10 to the 3. So this is permutation with repetition. All right. So now let's look at the second uh, example. Here we have in a recent swimming competition, the country listed on the left. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think they're 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 countries. So the countries listed on the left competed. And what is the likelihood that Russia will end up with the gold medal, Japan with the silver, and Germany with the bronze? Now, clearly, do you see that the order matters over here? So even if Russia, Japan, and Germany were to win, if Russia ended up with the bronze and Japan with the gold, etc., that's not the same as what we are looking at. So order matters. Also, in this case, Russia cannot get both the gold medal and the silver medal. Okay, so there's the number of options that you have do not remain the same at every trial. So let's see, just as before, what the sample space will look like. So until I know what is the set of all possible outcomes, how many possible outcomes do I have in the sample space? I really am not in a position to compute the probability. So let's look at how this would work out. So for the very first position, I can, any one of the 10 countries could win, right? The goal. So there are 10 countries, so any one of those 10. Now, once the first position is taken up, I don't have the same number of options available for the second one. So here I have a situation where order matters, but I don't have repetition. 
okay so for the second position i only have nine choices and of course for the third option third position i only have eight options available so the total number of alternatives so gold silver bronze sequences of countries that could end up is with is 10 times 9 times 8 and i'm looking for the likelihood that russia will end up with the gold japan with the silver and germany with the bronze only one out of the 720 options represents the sequence that i'm looking for so my probability is simply 1 over 720 so do you see how important it was to come up with that number 720 so i have 720 dots over here in the sample space each dot representing a sequence of gold silver and bronze so this is an example of permutation without repetition all right now mercifully there is a built-in function in excel that will do this for us so let me show you how this works so to get this 720 uh, permutation so if i take 10 times 9 times 8 what i'll do is i'll multiply it by 1 okay which will not change anything so i'll simply multiply it by 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and then i'll divide it by the same 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 okay <clears throat> so here i have uh <clears throat> the same uh, a, a number in the in in the numerator and the denominator i simply multiply multiply 10 times 9 times 8 by 1 now the numerator that you see 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 5 4 3 2 1 the shorthand notation for it is what is called a factorial is represented by 10 factorial so anytime you have a number factorial factorial 8 that's simply a shorthand for 8 times 7 times 6 times 4 uh, 5 4 3 2 1 so at the bottom in the denominator i also have 7 factorial do you see okay so therefore the permutation that i'm looking for the, the way we write it is 10 p 3 okay so what is the permutation of 10 things taken three at a time so in other words how many ways can i create sequences of three from a set of 10 numbers so do you see i have a situation where order matters and i don't have repetition now there is a built-in function in excel to do this so i will and that is called perm so let me show you equal to permute and it says okay how many how many do you have total i have a total of 10 and i'm choosing three out of it and i come up with 720 so mercifully you don't have to do this calculation manually so permutation the permute is the built-in function in excel and that will calculate the number for you so remember when you're trying to enumerate um, the number of outcomes for discrete spaces you have a situation where uh, <clears throat> order matters you're trying to enumerate these outcomes then there are situations where we uh, when we're trying to find the uh, number of outcomes we would use permutation so there are two variants one where order uh, well in, in in all cases order matter here for permutation but we have one situation where repetition is allowed another situation where repetition is not allowed and uh, the built-in function that i just showed you is to compute permutations when repetition is not allowed so the summary is that you use permutations when order matters okay and you're trying to enumerate uh, the number of outcomes <clears throat>